All right. Wow, we already got people in here. We are live. Hey, guys. Welcome to episode 55? 55, we think. 55. This is a little bit of a different episode. As you can see, we are hanging out at uh, Alamo Square Park. That's the painted ladies behind us. From the Full House show, if you guys know. And also Fuller House. I suppose. Is it right? Are they still living in the same place in that show? I think they might. I have not been watching I that. haven't watched Fuller House either. But um, the internet was out at TRE HQ. It was. And even our phones weren't working that well. So we decided, let's go on the road. Let's Old do school. a little field trip. And you want to know what's fun is I drive across this every single day. Do you really? I do. But You I noticed it was here, right? I, I always noticed they were here. But I've like very little have I like stopped and like hung out. Okay. So now we're now we're doing it. I feel like I'm scratching a major, you know, like San Francisco tourist thing. Like for example, have you ever gone to Alcatraz Island and done that one of the That is like tours? the quintessential shot right there. Um, I have. I've gone. I've done the. Uh, I've never done a tour. I've done the tour. Isn't that crazy? Wow, we got lots of people in here. Ash G, David Friswell, good to see you. Kayla, Jazz. Yeah, let us know how you're uh, chiming in. The usual drill. We want to know. You know, we have. Um, it's a little bit. Harder to see what you guys are saying on this little app than. But you know you can kind of pull and scroll in the comments, right? Is that right? Yeah. Uh, hit the cancel. Okay. Uh, and just like, check this out. Like I can go here, and then I can like scroll and oh, like, nice. turn them out that way. Okay, sweet. From someone who's done this. Yeah, and we can also running, do some little. Gun style before. We can do like. Uh, Whoa. Some all kinds. Oh, we of can stuff do here. some World Cup and some other things. Yeah, like World yeah. Cup. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of fun. What right. about the live? What does live mean? Oh, that oh, means like live soccer live. live, soccer live so. I know, All right. right. All right, we'll stop messing around. But this is, this is, uh, when is your pop socket giveaway Ooh, today? Good question. It is happening at the end of the hour. All oh, right, because we did it last um, week. Last week. We right. did a Gleam Link for last week's giveaway, you guys. Because we're running gunning today, we're, we're not going to be doing another show, uh, another, another, uh, live Wait. giveaway that we're going to start. Well, well, actually, this is not true. So we will do, we'll do a drawing at the end of the show for the pop yes. socket giveaway. And if you'd like to enter it, you just have to go to last week's episode on our YouTube channel and enter, that and enter it that way. And then uh, usually we, we start a new one for next week, but because we, we are be starting a new one. Yeah, so next week we're going to have um, Mark from Strike. We actually might have another wonderful guest next week. Oh, okay. Uh, Blue Benedum. Oh, nice. Nike coach okay. coming in to cool. talk to us about run form and technique. Now, um, so, so before we get into your guys' questions, which we're super excited to do, Oh, this get real. Oh wow, we got lots of here. questions coming in. Lots Any of tips really for good things. Slaughter disease. Um, um, I don't believe that it's a disease. Totally. How old should you be to run a half marathon? We can talk about that. Yeah. Uh, Rocio says I've had ongoing issues with my left leg, an IT band injury, yeah. and now knee discomfort. What can I do? Totally. How can I get faster for a 200 millimeter 200, 200 meter race? race? Oh, on the Dang. track. Uh, how do you treat sore muscles, please? We can definitely talk about that. Yeah, we had such great things. I'm training for a half marathon. Should I do tempo repeats or an extended tempo run without breaks? Yep. I'm currently running a 5:30 mile. Nice. Yeah. What kind of workouts do you do just, just, just to improve? improve? Okay. You guys get some good stuff. What typical day meal plan? I love all the questions, guys. Wow, these are great questions. This is like a. I guess it is ask me anything, right? Totally. So where should we start? Well, why don't we just jump into the questions and we'll, we'll give people some updates along the way. What do you think? Yeah, first of all, we have a bunch of you guys that signed in. Um, if you see the link below, uh, there is a link for our summer virtual 5K, which we, we just announced uh, earlier just this Just announced. Week. And uh, we're, we're going to be doing that on July 28th, 29th? 29th, 29th, which is the same weekend that we're all running the San Francisco Marathon. Correct. And, and Half Marathon to be specific because we are the official online coaches for them. So we thought we would run a virtual race. So for those of you guys who can't come to San Francisco and see all these lovely places back here, yeah. to be able to uh, come race with us. Yeah. So the race is going to be 28th, 29th. Uh, there's a link to get in there right now. And we are running a live 30-day challenge, special edition, one of our most popular things we do all year, yep. set it to start on Sunday, June 30th. So basically nice. a week from Sunday, where you could train with us for a month for free if you come yeah. in. So pretty good deal. Yeah, awesome. So uh, guys, hit that link below if you want to join 
the summer 5K. We and we send you the uh, you send, send we send you the medal, the race packet. Uh, people love this. So we've we had this is the, what our fourth or fifth one. Yeah. Uh, the virtual 5K has been a been a hit. So if you have not joined us for one of those, um, I'm very proud of the medals that I designed them myself. Uh, you did. Yeah. Fridge magnet, bottle opener, they're pretty darn cool. And it's if you just cool. want to even see what the metal looks like, it's all on that page, all the information. You can run from yeah. anywhere in the world. You could race right out your back door. You could do it an official thing. You could do the 5K as part of a longer run that day, just a way to kind of get us all together. Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, we have Super Chat enabled, so if you want us to definitely get to your question, you can always Super Chat us. Um, but meanwhile, we're going to start trying to knock these out. We have lots of questions coming in. Totally. So, and I'm seeing names that I haven't seen in a while. So, yeah. Um, yeah we Crystal, got Wayne, we got uh, others. Bishop, Zoom. Cool. Uh, all right, let's start knocking them out. Let's start knocking these questions. We're going to scroll up to the top, to be fair, to get you early people in there who they started How do I treat some sore muscles? Let's, let's start there. Um, we're going to do the half. Two minutes. How do I make my... Okay. So first question from Mel21-2007, maybe one of our first people in, she wrote this 1156, which is pretty cool. I'm training for a half, the sunset and SF in five weeks. I'm training run to, I'm training running through uh, three minutes and walking one minute, my pace is 13 minutes. How do I make my pace faster? So with our beginner runners, we do this with all of our programs and they're starting with a yep. walk run. Uh, we try to get you guys out of like the funk of staying in the same three one all the time. Like yep. sometimes we we use this as a good tool, but then we rely on it too much. Yep. So making sure you're breaking it up a little bit. Every once in a while, do a two minute run, one minute walk, and just by doing something like or or do like a, sorry, do like a four minute run, one minute walk, or a thirty second walk break, and just by lengthening your run and shortening your walk, you're gonna average speed is gonna be up a little bit. And the other thing is, you gotta make sure, oh, you get your glasses on. I do not have my glasses today. We gotta make sure that we are doing some hill repeats, we're doing some short intervals, 30 seconds, a minute long, maybe up to two or three, where you are pushing the comfort zone, yep. right? Maybe 10 minute mile for you, or nine minute mile. You can run that fast, believe it. It doesn't all have to be the same gear. So that's really the best way to get faster. You know, we were talking about this this morning, which is, you know, how many gears do you have? If you have a bicycle, it's very clear, uh, that if you have a single speed bike versus a five speed, 18 speed, whatever it is. And as runners, we also have gears per se, but a lot of it comes from our comfort zone. How often do you get and into we those both, gears? Exactly, we both talked about how we both have our own kind of comfort zones, like where we like to live. And we're both in week three of the half marathon program, our advanced program. And, uh, you know, like oh. it's pushing us to go into different Nora. speeds and different things. Nora, come here. We got our little doggy out here. Nora, do you want to yeah. come say hi? Hello. Come on, Nora, come here. That's okay. She's I know. Gonna, she's she's going to be in a shot. Hey, guys, what's up, Troy? I know. Hey, well, Troy, we got, how's a, going? we got a little, little dog shot right here. All right, so anyway, so next, that's, that's a question. Next question was around how do you treat sore muscles? Sore muscles. So, what do you got, Craig? Sore muscles, I mean, first of all, getting sore um, in terms of, like, your muscles being sore from workouts is part of the process of, of working out. I mean, so basically the... Whenever you have a workout of anything, of any sort, whether it's a running workout or a strength workout, or even for, in my case recently, I've been getting sore uh, like hamstrings from, from stretching because I've been doing yeah. pretty intense uh, mobility workouts. And the issue there is that you're basically getting an adapt adaptation. So you have the stimulus, which is the stretch, the, the you know, lifting weights or going to yeah. run. And then you have a response, which is, your muscle fibers, they break down, the individual muscle There's fibers. All these little basically. micro tears that occur. Exactly. Yeah. And then and then the soreness comes from the tear and then the it is going back to um, repairing that tear, which you start to feel a little bit better. So sore, soreness in some ways is actually a great sign that you're having, having that adaptation response. Yep. But prolonged soreness or going into a workout when you're already sore, that could be a sign that you're not rested enough. Yeah, we want to make sure that the recovery is happening. So the idea to think about it is like, I don't want to avoid soreness, as Craig says. That's a sign that we're pushing ourselves and, yep. and making progress. But we want to have some recovery strategies that expedite me getting out of the soreness area. Right. So um, lighter, easier, lower intensity workouts can help just sort of flush the legs. 
uh, a lot of other mobility strategies of soft tissue work, getting on a foam roller, rolling out sore areas are really great, as well as more kind of gentle movement stretchy stuff. Yeah, and, and generally what you're doing there with all those things is you're increasing blood flow. So when you are... Don't when, mind me. Continue. Okay. When you are, um, like, so let's say your quads are sore and you are rolling them out, partially what you're doing is getting blood flow to that area. And then the other part of what you're doing is, you know, when your muscles reform, uh, meaning when those micro, micro tears are, are being repaired, they don't always repair in like a perfect, like a, a perfect weave for the muscle fibers, right? So they, you can get these adhesions where you're, you know, um, one muscle is being um, kind of adhered to another muscle. And so part of what this soft tissue work um, myofascial release is basically breaking that stuff up so that it can it can start to move it in more. separate all the, the fascial layers from different fibers and right. skin so everything's sliding smooth so we got a ton of mobility recovery stuff it's really about daily habits and weekly habits uh, as part of the hard training thing wow, we um, have so many questions. so many questions let's jump around a little bit uh, we asked we answered Josh Hyde's question we are doing our giveaway at the end of the hour uh, we are giving away TRE pop sockets. They look like this. Oh yeah, you got it right there. Pretty darn cool. I can't I show love, you mine because we're using my phone. I know. I love this thing. Uh, it pops up this way and uses a little stand. Enter by visiting last week's live show. The Gleam link is there where you can enter the giveaway and, and still still get in there. Awesome. All right, Let's so see here. how to get faster. Do we want to do the 200 meter? That seems like a very niche question. So we'll, we'll yeah, we might we, we might revisit that if we can. Uh, um, we're gonna try to hit the questions where we think that a yeah. lot of people will look. How old should you be to run a half marathon? Ooh. And then there was another question that I saw, which is, how do you modify workouts if you are a uh, like an older person, like in the senior age group? Yeah, he didn't give us his age. That's totally fine. So, but, how old should you be to both, run a half marathon? Both ends on the spectrum. You know, there are, I would say, probably like younger athletes nowadays, like yeah. attempting uh, these yeah. longer events. Uh, the, my only problem with going after, say, half marathon or marathon where you're doing a lot of pavement pounding at an earlier age yeah. is just like, you're just not letting yourself fully develop. I agree. And, and then you're just pounding the snot out of yourself early on. So. So getting some distance is fine, but like a mix of trail and a mix of other activities that's not running, I think is equally good. So like, yeah, I think I think specializing when you're really, you know, let's say that you're you're 12, 13, and you are going through adolescence. First of all, your body does not grow. This is actually one, one thing that really starts to come in into play with endurance athletes, especially with people who have who are like non-swimming athletes, but where you actually yeah. have. Um, you have kind of like a pounding, uh, whether it's a triathlon yeah. um, or, or running, which is that your body does not grow in a proportionate way. And you can see this in teenagers where, you know, yeah. you might have really long legs or a longer torso. And so because of that, your biomechanics change, like in a six month, three month yeah. time period can really, really change. And, and when you are taxing your body from a mileage perspective, and even if that's like 30, 40 miles a week, for a young person, that can be that that's can a be lot. a lot, and 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 you're gonna see those things play out in terms so of injuries. So if you're if you're eager, spots. if you're younger, a young buck yourself, and you are looking to get into these longer races, or you're a parent and you have kids who are asking or something, I would. It's always hard to preach patience with yeah. the, with the younger ones, but I would encourage that if they do that, that to also spend time doing a lot of other activities. Like you want to specialize in and anti-specialization, right. you know, and then, and then you'll have plenty of time later on to, to, to go down those rabbit holes. But I, I find that that's probably more of a healthier approach to thing. Yeah. Um, and then for the, for the guy who asked about how do you modify some of our workouts if you're older? So a lot of times with older athletes, and we actually did a great video with uh, our coach yep. Edward yep. on, uh, how to qualify for the Boston, how to qualify for the Boston Marathon. And At he, age. he is a master's athlete. Yeah. So one of the things he said, which is interesting, is that even though you're older, you can't be afraid to stress the system. Right. You have to do the hard stuff, but you also have to do a lot of the self-care. And as we get older, our focus on strength and injury prevention is much more important. I know Edward is super focused and diligent on all that work, right. on run form. And uh, you know, sometimes your recovery may not be the same as it was when you're 25. Right. So. 
uh, sleep needed. Maybe you need an extra easy day between like hard running days. Yep. You, you know, things like the that. The same sort of adaptation response to the same stimulus is not going to happen the same when you're 60 as it does when you're 20. 100 percent. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in your marathon. What was that plan? Is there a preview of it? Uh, we can talk about it right now on our our marathon uh, kind of product page. Oh, actually, you know what? If you go to uh, the run experience slash training plans, you can just go to our website yeah. and pick training you can, plans. You can start to look at the different things yeah. we have there. There's a, there's on the left-hand side, you'll see a drop-down of all of our programs, and there is a video there that shows you a little bit more about the marathon there. program goes but deeper in. We can talk about it. Um, all of our programs have like a common basis, which is that we focus on strength, uh, injury prevention and mobility, and then, and then form and technique work. And that is kind of like the the base of all of our programs. Um, of course, in each different program, how we approach those are a little bit different for the half marathon, marathon, for yeah. uh, the 30-day challenge, beginner running and, program. And, you know, we know, like, obviously other coaches recommend that, but a lot of times they don't have those resources, and, and we really worked hard to build them into the program itself. So, of course, you are going to have, um, you know, the weekly mileage, you're going to have your long runs, you're going to be challenged with tempo and hills work. So you're going to see, like, the hard training that you need to do to be race ready, but you get all these other resources layered in as well. Uh, we have an advanced option for those of you who are a little bit more experienced and, you know, like enjoying running those slightly higher, higher yep. volume loops. We're doing, so, yeah. we're actually doing, both of us are doing, actually doing the advanced, the advanced option program right now. for half marathon. Um, if you, yeah, I mean, actually, if you join the, the, uh, the summer 5k, uh, you can do the 5k as part of your training program and you get 30 days for free to check all the totally. stuff out and then, uh, yeah, and totally. that, that's the best part. Yeah. Best part. Um, does running sometimes? Desi asks, just uh, one of the pulling one of the fresh questions. And guys, we're gonna scroll back and forth. We'll jump around. We're gonna continue to pull some early questions. I don't experience worry. pain at the outer side of my knee. Is, is it, it dangerous? dangerous? So uh, this is one of those questions where it's like, we can't diagnose online. Uh, there are so many things that could be causing your hi, hi Nora. Say hi Nora. Um, Nora says, that could someone be... want to come pet me? Yeah. Because you know. Uh, there could be a lot of things that cause that pain. What generally that we try to talk about is when you have running, your pain from running. Hi, do you just want to sit right in the middle? <laughs> She's locking the shade. Okay. Uh, when you have pain from running, a lot of times people have this idea that, hey, I was doing fine, everything was great, and then one day, pff, yeah, now I have pain. Know. And really what usually is the, is the case is it's kind of like having like tires that are misaligned on your car yeah eventually you're going to see the wear patterns and then you know you can blow a tire or something like that but that was happening for a long time and, it, and usually with these kind of repetitive stress injuries um there is some sort of biomechanical problem yeah. and what we try to focus on on our programs and just generally with their own experience is yep. how are you looking at the problem from a causal perspective as opposed to trying to yeah. treat the, uh, the symptoms. You know, so specifically, all no, right, I, all right, no, come get on. out of here, dog. She's right. gonna stick your butt over here. Get over here. Um, specifically for uh, the knee uh, pain outside the knee, a lot of times that is typical of IT band pain uh, showing up a little bit. You know, that like lateral aspect of the knee. So make sure that you're really rolling out your quads, that outer part of the quad, not just the IT band itself, but that vastus lateralis. Super, super important. Hey, you just throw that in the vastus lateralis. You think everybody knows what that is? Yeah, the outer part of the quad. You know? There you go. And then uh, make sure you are spending time on um, like things like the couch stretch. If you don't know what that is, look that up. We've got plenty of videos on it. Avoid uh, downhill running. Sometimes with the IT band, downhill running can be a little more sensitive as you're pounding your pavement. Be really focused on, on, on cadence. Basically, like nip this thing in the bud before it comes a problem. Because when your IT band gets like really effed, it is not fun, and it That's will a take a long time. Process, so yeah. you have to trade like okay, a couple days to a week of some down running to to get ahead of this thing versus like a couple months right so don't ignore this thing and 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 get on it let's go let's go next we'll kind of keep the pace up with these questions here um oh another good one uh do we just ask it do we just answer Josie's question breathing. i like the breathing stuff um how can i improve my breathing you guys you may notice edward one of our coaches is in the chat answering questions as well so we'll try to get to it live but edward is uh doing a great job of of talking and engaging with you guys too so josie says hey how can i improve my breathing i can't run for very long before i'm completely out of breath and have to rest 
What do you think, Craig? I think that, one, uh, how deep are you breathing? I'm like really close here. This is a tiring hold. It is. Do you want to take a break? Yeah, you here, hold it. You hold it for a little bit. That's I'm just going to chill here. There you go. go. Oh, it's so good. Oh, all yeah, right. Now I can suck. answer all kinds of questions. Uh, one of the things that I would say around breathing is that a lot of us, um, we breathe really shallow. And it's because of the wheel, like being in a hunched over position. And you tend to breathe in this kind of upper respiratory area. And you're not using the full extent of your lungs. So also, when, you're, when you are working out, I mean, running is a strenuous activity. You are going to have some, some sort of like, you know, respiratory response to like running for the first time. But, you know, if you are huffing and puffing, either one, your exertion level is... is yeah, slow down. Yeah. You're probably going too fast. Yep. Um, it's, it's, sometimes it's an expectation thing when you're new to running, you know, any running speed is going to be a super high intensity. So allowing yourself to, to do those interval style things where it's like, you know what, I'm going to run for a minute, walk for a minute, and then build up to running two minutes, walk for a minute and is a way to do it. You will be shocked at how, how much that can change in two weeks. Yep, it really you know? will. Like your body is going to adapt, um, you know, two weeks to like six weeks. So stick with it. Um, what when you, you say can about the deep breathing part? Slow down. And then the deep breathing part, mechanically, we need to become better breathers. So learning really how to breathe into your belly is a way to just get more oxygen in, be more stable, and be less stressed. Yeah, so, so Nate has this thing, and he often tells people, we, we have this at the beginning of a bunch of our programs, just to do the nose breathing mile. And, and you don't have to do a mile. You can do it, hey, I'm going to do this for 60 seconds. Yeah. For, for, and, and really, it actually makes breathing harder. But the idea of a nose breathing mile, or you can do it for however long you want, is to breathe in and out only through your nose, close your mouth, and it'll force you to really focus on diaphragmatic yeah. breathing. And so the purpose is not to like make yourself huff and puff more, but it's to really feel what does it feel like when I'm actually using my diaphragm, which is the muscle around yeah. uh, around your lungs, it kind of pulls the air in and pushes it out. And, and look at breathing, like we have a, a few breathing videos on our channel yep. that go into this, even starting like on your back, very relaxed, can I breathe there, can I think about being aware of my breathing at like the office, and then can I tie this into my running? Yep. Um, ah, Dave Oldfield, what a nice guy. Hey guys, just to say thank you for your great advice, which I've Shit. used to prepare for my first half marathon this Sunday. Nice. Yahoo, you have to let us know how it goes. Um, let's first see First half here. marathon is actually a great, that is a, that is a good day because half marathon is a distance where you can still probably go out to eat and have a beer afterwards if you want. And it's a hell of an accomplishment. I mean, 13 yeah. miles, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm almost envious of your position right now. It's going to be a great weekend. I hopefully feel like you're, you're well prepared. Yeah. Um, and for you guys who, who are thinking about half marathons, we've seen a lot of half marathon questions. We have a half marathon program and we can tell you up and down like all of the different, you know, answer questions. But yeah, but truly we've put a lot of this advice into an actual program. And if, and if you guys are on Strava, like I'm doing the program right now, like follow me on Strava. You like, you yep. actually see the workouts that, uh, that we're doing as part of it. Yeah. We're, we're both um, on week three. Both? We both did, uh, the hill workout. I know it was good. Uh, so Gene Lee says, hey, uh, in case of hip bursitis and pain in the upper hamstrings, should I rest until the pain is completely gone? So we got to be careful here, like when we're looking at these specific diagnoses, like again, just like Craig says, like we're not internet doctors, we're not trying to play them. And uh, we got to be careful with those test recommendations. If you're working with a doctor or PT, you want to make sure to follow them. You know, that being said, when I'm dealing with that type of pain, rest alone isn't going to fix the underlying issues that may have caused hip bursitis in the first place, which might be tight hips, hips like not, like I'm missing flexion, extension, some range in that hip thing that is, that is causing the irritation. So you wanna scale back the activities that are causing the funkiness, but then you wanna add activities that improve and restore hip range. Right. So I would, really be maniacal about improving your hip range, things like squatting, deep squat. Again, we visited the couch stretch. Um, there's a lot of uh, mobility exercise that really help there. I think strength is going to be important. Getting your hamstrings and your glutes really firing well to help support those hips. So squatting, deadlifts, lunges, step ups, uh, single leg deadlifts, single leg squats are going to be really important just to get you stronger 
so that you can actually, your body can actually support your hips. And for you guys who have either been in our training club or are have purchased the injury prevention program, I have a special uh, announcement that we have an all new version of it that is that is coming up. Coming I think, out. I think it'll probably be ready with in three or four weeks it's um, gonna be super fun we're going like deep dive but we found that that is one of like the biggest levers on people's um ability to kind of train is, is how, how they manage their injuries how they recover from injuries and so we took what was a great program it was head to toe and we're just going deeper and deeper into each area um so i'm really happy with uh with all of the yeah uh, the, the, the i'm just there. gonna comment comments yeah. so we're getting a thing says too much noise try to adjust camera we do. We'll Is, see if we can well, adjust it there. Meaning like they're saying it or they're saying it, yeah. We'll We're working on that, guys. Uh, we'll see if this improves the camera sound as we are out here. Um, so, Steven asks, um, training for my first 50K, what are some helpful tips in getting ready? And as we do this, you guys can chime in to see how the sound, if this is a little bit better. Yep. Um, you know, we both, I ran my first 50K last fall, or um, kind of, for the yeah, trails, and, third, uh, but first one in a long time. Um, so, giving yourself, I think, plenty of lead time to, to go in is nice. A lot, a lot of lead time, because the base, you know, you can run a 50K. It sounds like static. Oh, still pretty fuzzy. Oh, really? I wonder if it's this. This is why we probably lost a bit of All right. Here, uh, we're going to try this, guys. I'm going to pull this out. We'll try to pull this back in better. We're just checking with our little uh, adjustments here. This is kind of buzzy. Okay, let's see if this is better. Well, I pulled it out. That was better for a second, but let's see if this improves it. Now we're plugged back in. Huh. Better when it was unplugged. All right. All right, well, well there we go. Unplugged. There we go. All there, right, guys, we are. no adjustment. How much um, sleep do you need to eat? That is yeah, a hell of we'll, a question. We'll get that one. So anyway, more than you're getting right now. That's the answer. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That is that is probably the only universal answer that like pretty much is gonna apply to everybody. I know, I know. So back to our thing on the 50k. Um, you know, time on the trails, time on your feet is huge. Uh, it's not just always about the long run, but it is about stacking some runs together can and we, and really working on running under fatigue. Can we talk about the goals here? The like 50k is a long enough race where you can have multiple types of goals. Are you going to run the race, and do you want to like, or are you there to see if you can survive it? Because you can probably like learn how to survive it within a few months, but be careful about how quickly you are attacking the 50k 50k tends to be like the first ultra race that people try and ultra running is very different than it is than, some beast. Uh, road running and um you know how you handle that stress and it's not going to be just the stress of the race it's going to be the stress of the cumulative yeah. mileage and long runs that you're going to be doing leading up yeah. to the race there are a lot of pitfalls there there's it's a different type of running it's a different type of racing so you know looking at your running career what's your injury history what is your like mileage history over the last year 18 months and and i would say like you know lead time is not just how much time am I preparing for the race? That includes base mileage of what did you do in the previous six months? Yeah, like how having much, a good foundation yeah. of like, you know, two hour runs and feeling like you're like, you feel like pretty two hour run fit before you start a program is, is a pretty conservatively yeah. good place to be. Right. But hey, it's fun. But yeah. like, hey, when you start driving the car harder with more miles, do you need more oil changes or less oil changes? Right. More tire rotations or less? It's gonna be more, so make sure that as you feed into those longer things that you're giving yourself that little extra love. What does it say? I'm talking about cramps. What's with, oh, is Edward chiming in there? Great. So Shubham Shub says, I'm repetitively having cramp in my right calf and left hamstring. What can be the reason? Any suggestions to avoid it? I'm training for a marathon right now, which is in September. So sometimes the cramps could occur at night, uh, just around the day. That just might mean that it's just super tight and be hydration hair trigger it could be strength it could be lack of yeah. uh like uh you know salts and magnesium and electrolytes there are a lot of things that cramps can be it's due multifactorial to, yeah. to get all fancy and sciencey on you but what we want to do is like honestly the mobility thing is big so you're in the middle of your training training starting to catch up with you the body's a little bit more tired like give yourself that extra warm-up give yourself that extra you know, mobility time after right. just to help 
that makes a huge difference. The other thing is you can kind of control your own destiny with the cramp sometimes, honestly, by how you breathe and how you relax. If you get a cramp and you're like, oh shit, I have a cramp and you get tense, it's gonna get worse. But right. if you can figure out how to relax through it a little bit and let that sucker go, it will release. Yep. It will release. Let's see here. Da 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 da. Coming back here, scrolling. You may not see my hands. Oh, how much sleep do you guys get each night? How much sleep do you get, Craig? Hell asleep? No. Not enough? Uh, yes, for example, yesterday I went to bed at like midnight. And oh my so goodness. So I, it was just very late for me. Um, and so I, I slept in today until like 7.30. Um, so that was a good amount of, I was also, you know, out drinking last night. So it was kind of like a, huh. yeah. We're gonna be out drinking tonight too. I know we have a special guys. Tonight. We have quite an evening in store for your friends at the, the run experience. Nate and I are going to a very fancy restaurant. Very We've been fancy. planning it now for like six weeks, and so it's gonna be a celebratory. It's gonna be good. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm like hesitating, like whether or not to eat lunch, just so I can go in. We should probably eat lunch. I should yeah. probably eat lunch. Yeah, you don't want to go in like starving. No, we don't want to go in starving. But, but uh, yeah, we're excited about that. Anyhow, uh, to go back to your question of sleep, um, I typically sleep, if I'm reliably sleeping six and a half hours, um, that's good for me. If I am upping my training and, and I'm like in the 50K when we were training for that, yeah. I needed closer to seven, um, maybe even a little, a little over. Yeah. I believe sleep is a is a very, very variable thing. I it mean, is, some people are able to function, like I need more. Um, my like hard stop is like seven. If yeah. I'm consistently under seven, things usually start to fade. And if I can get a few nights a week where I'm closer to eight to nine, mm -hmm. that works well. So nice. it's like so a few days dip closer to seven, but like my wife and I, cause we get up very early at like between like four and 4.30. You're 30. going to bed while the sun's up right now. Oh my, you? yeah, we are. We're going to bed while six year old children are playing outside our house. You know, we, we literally start going to bed uh, upstairs around 7.45 to eight. It is yeah. right outside 7.45 yeah, right now. Today's solstice, so happy solstice guys. Hey, happy solstice. That's why I we're know, outside. Right? It's not why we're outside. We're outside because <laughs> there's no internet in my house. But, I know, right, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's the sleep. And then the same thing, when I'm training more, I need a little bit more. Uh, it's been fun to play with my whoop band, which not only tracks the sleep, but how restful the sleep is. It goes through different like sleep cycles and it gives like a very good sense of like my heart rate variability and resting heart rate just to see how I'm recovering from, yeah. from training. So it's, um, you know, kind of yeah. a cool thing. I've been learning that I wasn't actually getting as much sleep as I thought. And we, uh, we sent one of those to Edward, right? Yeah, Edward got it. He's nice. been in it. Awesome. Uh, sunsets at 11:45 p.m. Oh, in Alaska. My what word. time does the sun rise in Alaska today? Seriously, that's Edward, that's probably like 12:01 yeah. or something. Is yeah. like a 15-minute night. Um, yeah, Shubin says thanks, coaches. I know I need more in regular mobility work. It's just I'm lazy about what I'll get into it. Yeah, dude, like make a plan. Like, make a plan and, and get in. Uh, try that the injury prevention program. Um, if you, you want to buy it by itself, it's like 20 bucks. It's I know. the best 20 bucks you'll spend. Totally. And uh, and and try the things out there. I mean, we have obviously have lots of YouTube videos as well. But like having a like a specific area based approach is is like helpful. make it a habit so you don't have to think about it because there's way more interesting things in life to think about than you know foam rolling your quads yep. like seriously like just make it a time i always do it you know more or less to my wife's chagrin at the uh, after dinner while we are maybe watching a netflix episode or two it's like one night I'll roll up my quads uh, and my glutes. Another night I'll spend some time on my hamstrings and calves. Another night I'll, I'll do something else and I just rotate. And if I'm sore, I'll spend a little time with that thing. Uh, Joy asked a good question. When is it most beneficial to do foam rolling immediately following a run? You know, it depends on how hard the run was. If yeah. I have done a really hard runner for a race, like I don't want a deep mobility session afterwards because my body's just like tender, yeah. right? I might just want to walk around, do something a little lighter. That feels more like it. I'm just kind of flushing things out. And I would save the deeper foam rolling for either later that day or, or the day after. Uh, I or that wouldn't, night. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that night. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would want to foam roll before. 
too much. I tend not to. I tend yeah. to do all of our other mobility stuff before and yeah. foam roll afterwards. I mean, there are some exceptions to that. If you have an area of restriction, like you're dealing with uh, like IT band stuff, yeah. um, I find like using Kyle's CTM band can like get blood flow to the area and loosen up a little yeah, bit before the run. Some. But but generally the, for the like rolling uh, like myofascial release type of stuff and where you're getting deep in there, I don't don't tend to do that before I run. Yeah, for I, sure. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we got a good one here from Ollie, patella tendonitis of the left knee. I'm sure you're not thinking about it in that excited voice when you're at the head. Yeah. <laughs> Has been causing me trouble for months. Strengthening and rest does seem to be help. Any other major tips? Uh, strengthening is going to be huge long-term play here. Uh, making sure specifically your hamstrings and glutes are really firing to uh, take a little pressure off that knee. A lot of times when we're dealing with pain and pressure there, like my big beefy uh, quadricep muscles are attached to the patella tendon, which you know wraps over the kneecap. And when those uh, quads are tight, it just like pulls all this tension over that kneecap, almost like you're like winding up a guitar string. Mm -hmm. As Craig, who's a musician, really kind of can identify. I like my that. guitar strings to stay on my guitar. Yeah. So what we need to do is we need to take a little pressure off. The way we do that is with a little bit of soft work, uh, a, a little you know, mobility work just to uh, take some of that off. So foam roll your quads like crazy. Get in there. Take a lacrosse ball, put it right above uh, your knee capsule, work around there, get a foam roller, work the whole length of your muscle. Like every single day, you have to do that. Uh, you should also be really good with single leg deadlifts, quarter squats, um, um, single leg bridges, anything that gets your hamstrings and glutes primed and do like three sets of five to 10 reps before you go run. I think that's really Interesting. big. Yeah. Um, you know what? I think these guys have all seen the house, the houses. Yep. I feel like I kind of want to change position for I a second. I told you it's hard. It's hard to do Are you that, down? right? Yeah. Let's, let's do it. bring this on up here. Oh yeah. Go. Good. This might be a little bit better. Here we go. Oh, so much better. A little bit have better there. Full houses in the background. Now we have Nora in the background. I know exactly. So, um, don't have foam rollers. What else can I use? Uh, literally, I use a, a coffee bottle. mug, yeah. uh, a traveler coffee mug all the time, a wine bottle, a lacrosse ball, anything round and round and hard and rolly you can use. So, so don't worry about it. And and look, lacrosse balls you can get one for two dollars. So, yep. it's it's very. We are like. Use a broomstick. Like we use broomstick bashing on our calves. Yeah, there are so many foam rolling yeah. options. We're actually going to do a secondary, uh, a second uh, foam rolling tool, soft myofascial release tool review. And we love some of the two. We, people send us stuff all the time. Some of them are great, but the truth is, nothing works unless you're doing it all the time. So find the tool that you have is, is easiest for you to get, acquire, have around, and then are easiest for you to use. That's the tool for you. In the end. They're all very similar. Totally. Uh, and guys, if you were just chiming in, let us know. Uh, we are answering your questions today as we go through and sit on this outside beautiful sunny day. We did have a cool interview lined up with the founder of Strike Movement Running, yep. sho or running Shoes. Alas, the internet decided not to cooperate today. The internet gods were not, not with us today. And so like we're... not with San Francisco. Yeah. Like in this tech city, uh, a bunch of the internet's down. Yeah. Beautiful out there. But I'm it's not, beautiful. Not, we have an excuse to be outside. It feels yeah. pretty darn good. And as I said, we are answering your stuff. What is painted ladies, man? Okay, the painted ladies oh, wait, actually, can you are like this? these houses. Like this. Hold oh. on. Okay. Watch. Well, you touched it last. It's now your turn oh, to hold God, the camera. No. <laughs> these oh, yeah. are the painted ladies. Yeah, those are the houses from Full House. Yeah, so I don't know. For some reason, they're famous. There are actually houses that are like that all around San Francisco. I know. These Victorian houses, yeah. super classic. So now I got to hold it. Okay. Now you got to hold it. All right, there we go. There's Nora resting in the bush back there because there she hot. comes. Now she starts to come out again. Uh, let's see here. I grabbed a ball from Walmart, really cheap, and I love it. Jeff yep. says perfect. Totally. Uh, what was the other one they said? If you can afford an R8 roller, it's good. Yeah, I, the R8 is actually an expensive but a great tool. So, uh, you know, yeah, definitely not necessary, but I do use yeah. it. Um, we done, done all these ones. Let's yeah, scroll let's, up here. let's scroll up a little bit, guys, as we're going in. And 
Um, is the injury prevention program related to mobility workouts? They absolutely are. Yeah. 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 A yeah. lot of times there's some active stretching and some exercises. And the big thing we do, guys, a lot of times if you go in and someone says, hey, my elbow hurts, and you just like do this, you don't really know why. Um, I'm not going to try pod. I know, I'm not going to try pod. Um, and uh, I got distracted for a second. Like if you don't know why you're doing something, yeah. it doesn't really help. So we really try to spend time on it, is like, hey, like your elbow hurts, uh, fix this in the short term, but this is why in the big, the big term, why things are happening. By the way, guys, uh, an unofficial sponsor of this video are Gooder Glasses. These. I know, I'm wishing I had mine. Uh, you do wish you had it, you wanna try this? That's good. Um, these are actually really great. Head, they guys. are um, $25 and they're they're awesome glasses. They're not like, uh, they're good because I like they hook behind my ears and I can totally wear them running. They don't necessarily look like race running glasses, but they totally work for running sunglasses. Yeah. Hey baby. And uh, yeah, there uh, you go. coming over to say hi. Anyway. Okay, well, distraction. <laughs> Distractoritis. But they're, they're very cool. Oh, uh, she's just see. tucking her head in. The ball works best for me. Yeah, there's lots of mobility tools to go back to that. Let's yeah. see. Um, let's get some. Let's get some other stuff there. How long to here. wait after donating blood before I, a long know, run? I don't know. I they, would, how long does it take for your blood to like? They re say that you get your blood back within like 24 hours. Yeah. But the truth about that is that the quality of blood and the number of red blood cells and stuff it takes a little while to get back into it. So you can run. You can definitely do your run. Uh, within 24 hours, I'm sure you like yeah. running at elevation or something. It'll feel a little bit like that. The only problem is that like you're not going to go back to ele yeah, that's yeah. True. So so it's uh, it'll take a little while to get your red bl red blood cell count back to where it was before. I'd be experienced. I would. I'd be curious to see if like other people have done that. Yeah. It's been a while since I've donated blood. Um, In college, just patient you know, yourself. we were only allowed to do it if we had about a month afterwards before we had to race. Oh, interesting. Uh, so our coach would, could, would be like, like don't, really, he's pretty don't strict donate. There. Yeah, don't donate blood unless it's a month until you race. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh, questions, questions. What do we got here? How do you do this? How do you not know how to do this? I'm showing our, our tech guy is is uh, tech guy's been having a lot of tech support problems today. That's one smart dog protecting her dome from the sun. There you which go. Which is my wife's hint that I need to cover my dome, oh. which is what I'm doing. <laughs> is that why you just put that That's on? That's why there? I'm doing right now. It's hot out here, man. Yeah. Um, I'm naturally protected. Okay, Ollie says, "Do you recommend?" Uh, you are. Future. I know. Hey, uh, we all can't have that like smooth cappuccino <laughs> skin tone. I like that cappuccino skin tone. <laughs> I'm gonna try to um, that. Ollie says, do you recommend knee supports when returning to running from injury? Uh, or do you think it would just not help to strengthen the knee? So with those types of things, a lot of times we might use them because we think it's gonna eliminate some pain in the short term. And maybe that does that, but also like it kind of gives us the me like, oh, well, I'll just wear this and not do the other stuff. So if you're using that in a tool in conjunction with all the other mobility, strength, or everything, great. But it can't be a replacement. That's right. super, super important. Um, oh, hey, you know. Uh, mate, you look Indian. That would be good, because I am. <laughs> oh my god. I just thought you hung out in the park a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? Yep. Uh, let's see here. We're scrolling up earlier, guys. Earlier questions for you. Um, let's see. Let's see. Getting, go scrolling through the earlier stuff about the sound. Uh, do you want to scroll about a little bit? <laughs> just hit uh, the anywhere on the screen. There you go. Uh, Holly just published a great. Oh, it's Edward. Edward's knocking out the questions left, right, and I center. I know, he's really good. Hey guys, thanks for your great advice. We cool. got that one. Breathing. Breathing. We knocked a lot of these out. We talked about the cramps. There's a bunch up here that we did not. I know. About. Ooh. Okay. Oh, for strength Mark. training as a runner, I'm not looking to bulk up. It may just be toned, tighten up what's there. Would you recommend for reps and weight? More reps, less weight? Uh, not necessarily. Sometimes I like to flip this question around. Yep. Um, and say if you did want to bulk up, what type of protocol would you follow? And most of the time, what I'd say here is, we're getting some weird comments here. Did our like super stream turn off? Are we getting a lot of this? Uh, we're getting a few. Let's see if we can 
get rid of that. Um, what we can say, guys, is from the strength standpoint, if we really wanted to bulk up, yeah. we would probably be like cutting out uh, a good portion of the running in cardiovascular part. Right. You would be doing like lifting of say five to six days a week. Yep. And a lot of times you would be doing a combination of heavy weight, but higher reps because it's that hypertrophy work. We are getting greater reps that really does the thing. So in contrast, most runners are lifting two to three days a week, okay. lighter to moderate loads with a lot more specific stuff. And even on those days when you're doing really heavy stuff, you're not gonna excessively bulk, especially if you're doing right. a lot of run training there. Right. I would say the one exception to that is if your body type is such where you were a bulkier guy in the past, like sometimes that happens a little bit. Yep. But uh, that's how I would say uh, for strength, we have a lot of great workouts on our YouTube channel, some follow along stuff. Don't be afraid of heavy stuff. Don't be afraid of, of weights. I'd say if you're just lifting two days a week uh, and you're balancing out with all your running, your body is going to shake out as it should. Um, thanks. Ooh. Hey guys, thanks for all your advice about running gait. Yeah, I, was I love this. told for more efficient run, it should be simulating my riding bike. My gait is cross, it's like cross country skiing, what works. Um, Simulating riding a bike, uh, you know, that analogy can has some merit to it, but it also could lead you in the wrong direction. Um, one of the things that I think, you know, a bike has you kind of going in circles and, and a very specific circle. Your, your gait when you're running is definitely not, not a, exactly a circle. But like no. things about, about like I do like to, I do like cadence. to think where that foot hits the ground and swings back, like it is you know in this sort of pattern like the foot doesn't go straight up yep it like swings around so there are some good aspects to that where there's a little bit of a like a pushing aspect and then a pulling aspect right that i, I need to do both the same way that i pedal uh i think the the pulling aspect is something that you know if people haven't uh, if you haven't experienced running in, in, in like a faster gear right like maybe you didn't yep. run 400s or you didn't have you weren't sprinting in soccer practice when you were younger and you've started running now um, a lot of times the, the part of the stride that people are missing is the, um, is the pulling aspect. And we actually have pulling drills that are part of our drill days and a lot of our programs. And I think that that, um, you know, actually you had it on your stride when you're yep. getting it. Um, getting getting your the pulling mechanics where your, your hamstring is actually, you know, if you think about butt kicks as a, as a drill, now you're not butt kicking, um, you're not, you're not, exaggerating that much when you're running but that motion is part of your running stride uh, just to a lesser extent and yep. I think a lot of times you have people who are they start out running really slow because they know that they're not a fast runner and like hey I'm, I'm a 12 minute runner right now I'm just yeah. getting started but you can get into this habit of trudging yep you know and and you, you really want to get out of that um, as quickly as possible because the same type of mechanics that has you trudging along at 12 minutes like they're not going to get you to nine minute miles or eight minute miles or seven minute miles yep. if you keep with that same form so yep. so yeah, the riding bike analogy has some merit to it but but also there's there's more to it than that yeah you want to be able to do some powerful things like bounding uh, to like really open up that stride as mm -hmm. well because yep. we really want both uh, oh, you got the you got yeah. The I'm getting some questions, questions here there. too. Awesome. So Anil asks, what workout would have helped me run a 220 for 800 meters? So guys, we are not track specialists. Yep. Um, I, my good friend Michael Zinski has been running uh, and really training for the 1500 meter. Oh yeah. And he just ran a 415 1500. Wow, that's that too bad. And just last wow. summer, last August, he had run 50 miles. So to go from a 50 mile run to that, I think is pretty uncool. Wow. Anyway. He follows uh, a lot of Nick Simmons online. If you don't know Nick Simmons, he's one of America's best um, 800 meter runners out there. And he publishes a lot of his training. So if you look up Nick Simmons and training, yep. you'll be able to get a lot of his workouts. And I would, uh, I would take a look at that. Yep. Yeah. In addition to like a lot of our strength and run form and technique, I, I think that stuff's gold. But specifically for the track, I think Nick Simmons is your man. Um, ooh, Eric asks, can you tell us any more about the virtual race coming up? I would love to. Yeah. The virtual race is, um, it's the TRE Summer 5K. Yeah. We had one last year. Um, you get a race packet, which has a poster, a medal, um, and a, your, and your bib. And your so bib. you can yeah, yeah. wear 
to be super serious. And then we also, um, so the, the, we also track your mileage through the Charity Miles um, app. And so we have kind of a TRE team in there. And then you- And, and just spe more specifically with the, the do you want to go, you want to do overview and then specifics? Yeah. And, Let's and do overview. So, so the overview is uh, our virtual 5K, you can run it from anywhere. We track it online. And then um, you basically like it's a participation in a in a virtual group. A lot of us are going to be running other races, and we'll we'll run the five k as part of that race. So we're going to be doing yeah. a half marathon that day. Um, and then in, in previous years, we've actually gone out to a five k race, park run yep. has these free five k's. Yeah, so we went and ran. Um, and it's kind of a it's a great like kind of community thing. And you get hardware. We send you we send you something in the mail as well. And um, kind of Nora, our, Nora races with us and we and then even she gets a medal that's true uh, our purpose in doing this also is that we give you a free month of our training club and you can dig into it and do the 30-day challenge we're all gonna be doing this 30-day live challenge together yeah uh, starting next starting weekend 30, so. and so we get to train together you know there are you've, I'm sure you've heard of virtual races um, our purpose and, and what we offer that is different is really that we get you know, hopefully are involved in your training because we are a training company. Yeah. We're not a virtual uh, race company, and, but we are. And a guys, company. just like full disclosure, like the the entry is 29 bucks. That yeah. includes shipping. We ship worldwide. Um, it is more expensive for us to ship internationally, but we really yeah, believe we, in supporting we you guys. We actually don't and, make and doing it. Uh, I, I think we we don't really clear much money at all off of the actual. Yeah, we just kind of cover metals. a we lot just cover of our costs. costs. Of shipping um, and but then we the offer made and stuff. one month of our training club membership which is 30 bucks so basically for 29 dollars you get all this stuff plus you know 30 dollars of training included yeah. so it's a it's a pretty good deal you love working with us even if you hang out for a month and decide to go off on your own like that's awesome yeah um so we're super stoked about that um what's the furthest you've ever run in one go Ooh, that's a good question you know what it was 52k 52 yeah is that what we just did in November? Right. <laughs> Those so, people, I'm not going to name know. them what I call them, would like to call the them. The races, I know, was they, a little longer than we thought. It was a little longer, which they told us with like, supposedly three miles ago turned into like four and a half miles I ago. I know, it was nasty. Which was really nasty. Uh, my longest run technically was 56 kilometers, so oh, 35 yeah. miles, oh, which nice. I did when I was 20, yep. 21. Yeah. Crazy. I, I don't know. Do you want to do, do you have any interest in the 50 miles? I don't know if I do right now. There's so much life. out there. Um, I would rather uh, work on getting a faster 5K time. Yeah. Um, Kylie Kylie time. just says, I just did a 5K run on a treadmill. Does that count? Hell yeah, it counts. Yeah, of course. Hell yeah, it counts. You know what I'm actually focused on right now is my mobility. And it doesn't sound sexy, but I want to get like a handstand with like full shoulder mobility. I want to get close to doing the splits or something similar to that. Because what I find is that as we get older, um, the thing that I am like, I'm not really desiring necessarily to like beat my 20 year old times on the track, but what I don't want to happen is for me to become a stiff old man. And that no. seems to be something that is, that, you know, tends to, especially for people who are active too, because yeah. you know, like you're working out, your muscles are like stimulus response, but you're really not working on your mobility. And so I want my mobility to actually increase as I'm getting older. Yeah. Which so. is, which is super important. Um, Ooh, so Anil asks, hey, I'm currently running a 22 minute 5K. My goal for the season is 20. What do you recommend? Uh, Dude, we actually have how to run a sub 20 minute 5K video on our channel. Yep. Look that shit up. It's gonna be really uh, good and helpful. We kind of break it down by pace, workouts. We give you some progressions to follow. Yeah. So uh, Shubham, Shubham, Jane asks, is a 30 day challenge a beginner program or something more advanced? And the, it is in between. So there are things, the 30 day challenge, it was a first program and, it, and it's meant to be like a, a precursor to some of our other programs. And we created an easier version of it called the beginner running program. And yeah. that's definitely meant for beginners. The 30 day challenge is probably intermediate in that you probably won't, if you've been running for a while, you won't find the running mileage difficult, but it, what it does is it kind of susses out where you're weak. So yeah. some people will be like, man, it was the running was totally easy, but like I really had a hard time yeah. with the strength workouts. And that'll kind of show you. Yeah, like volume is not the only way to challenge yourself. Sometimes we just we 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 look at your weekly mileage as the one thing, but how intense are those miles, right? Yeah. That makes a big difference. The other areas we challenge you is on your technique and your form. As Craig said, our strength training, it's 
it's gonna and it's gonna bury you a little bit in a good way. Like it, we start lower and we show you how yeah. to build up. And then like our half marathon program or marathon program that, that builds off of it kind of assumes that you've done some of that base work, work in terms of the strength and mobility and you're familiar with those movements. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think, I mean, Nate and I have both done the 30 day challenge many times and it's not, uh, it's not meant for somebody who, it's not like a beginner program. In yeah. fact, if you want a beginner program, do the beginning running program. Yep. Um, so yeah. so Shubham is asking, because he's actually in our program. So awesome. he's saying, I'm doing the marathon program right now. Can I add this 30 challenge to my training or will it be too much? It will be too much. The The 30 day challenge is, is usually something we might have you start before you jump into your marathon. But if you're already into the marathon, you're already getting everything you need in yeah. terms of the strength, the run technique, the mobility. And if you want to revisit the 30 day challenge later, I would do that in between programs. And if you wanted, if you, if you want extra and you want more intensity, I would say take some of the strength workouts from the strength program. Yep. And you can do those instead of the strength workouts. Well, not from necessarily if you want more intensity, but if you are in a, a gym and yeah. you want to actually use equipment right. because all of our strength program guys are all body weight so that uh, we've removed all excuses. We can't be like, hey Nate, I don't have gym membership, I can't go. Be like, tough noogies, yeah. dude. You're doing burpees in the park. And the, um, uh, the only exception to that is the running strength program. The which, one exception yeah. to the, the tough noogies is the running strength program, which has uh, kettlebells, dumbbells, barbells. I feel like noogies doesn't really come into play as much as it used to. I think it's When's a, the last time you've heard that word? I, that might have be you ever first, said tough yeah. noogies in your life? I don't think I've ever said it. I Have think you heard it, sounds, it before? I think it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> I don't plan on saying it either. How's that one? Well, tough noogies. You're yeah. going to hear more from me. Um, oh my all God. right. What else we got? That is so funny. Um, show them your phone. I know. No, I don't want to show them my phone. It is embarrassing. Uh, Kyle, she just asked. I think she was doing a follow-up thing. Oh. Josie says, hey, yep, I'm training for virtual 5K. This is my first one. I'm not very fast. Any advice? I think Josie also asked earlier, how many runs would you guys recommend every week for beginners? I want to start seeing results. You know, I like to start a lot of my beginners at three to four runs mm -hmm. uh, tops. You know, when we set up our programs, we, we build it that way. And the other days, you're not necessarily doing nothing, but you are working on... Um, your strength training and injury prevention work and and maybe other little cross training and so you might still be working out five to six days a week right uh, but not all of it is running right and I think that is important because when you're a beginner runner you want to spend as much time building up your athletic foundation as you do on the run stuff as well and you will see huge gains just by being a stronger athlete all around so that would be my advice there um, and you know for your 5k thing guys something like our 30 challenge would be great we are releasing a oh. really kick-ass six-week 5k program guys I'm super stoked about it um, we've got it all filmed Edward's working on um, pages the web pages yep. getting it all up line and uh, this program is gonna be a smoker for you guys who are super experienced runners who've done some marathons and halves like this is a program that you want to do in between those cycles to sharpen up but it's also very beginner friendly. We give you guys who are new to the 5K thing and you want to run a 5K. Is that right? Is it close time. to one o'clock? It is almost close to one. Guys, we have our drawing for the pop socket in one minute. In just a minute. Why don't we go ahead and I'm gonna pull, pull, that pull up. this up as we go here. Uh, we knocked through a whole bunch of questions, but I know that there's some questions that, that didn't get answered. Guys, we do this every week. If this is your first time signing in, this is like we do this every week, uh, Thursday at noon. We're usually not in a park. We're usually at TRE HQ. But uh, we really appreciate you guys signing on, and we're gonna do a drawing for two TRE pop sockets, two different winners. Yeah, I'm pulling the winners right now. There we go. Let's see it. Ooh, let's see here. Can you read it? Yeah. So we have Abdulaziz Al Badri from Cairo, Egypt. There you go. Holy mackerel, I've never sent something to Cairo, Egypt before. We have to see if we can send this and it doesn't get caught in customs. If we cannot, we'll give you a free month of our training club. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, so so to be determined. And then we also have Glenn Oppenheim from Malibu, California. That'll be easy. That will be easy. You guys are the winners of our um, little 
socket things here. So email us your address. I know I'm trying to do this with so not all flashy. There we go. And it's then you guys are done. also getting a uh, one there. free month of the training club. So congratulations to you, lucky ducks. Yeah, and we'll have uh, more drawings noogies for, for the rest of you next week. Hi, Nora. I'm just kidding. Not tough noogies. Thanks for all your questions. Okay. You guys are awesome. Uh, I have been out long enough in the sun without any sunscreen. Nora's coming over Say because hi, Nora. she's ready for some it. pets and uh, she probably wants a little bit of lunch. All right, guys. Um, we're out. Yeah, until next week. Thanks, until guys. Until next week, the digital high fives. And I don't know how to... Uh, how to end it. There you go. Hit the X button in the top corner. Oh, yeah.